All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM here in beautiful San Diego on Valentine's Day, no less. And today I am joined by Robert Spector, who is in Seattle. Actually, I'm a little bit north of Seattle in Bellingham, but, uh, yeah. but happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Robert's a best-selling author and international speaker. And he is the expert in customer service. And he's working on a book right now, a very interesting book uh, about customer service giants, people and, and people who've really, uh, you know, really put a lot into customer service and are role models for other companies, you know, people like Amazon, Starbucks, Nordstrom, and even Pearl Jam. Today, we're going to talk about Nordstrom in particular. Uh, so, Robert, what is it? What is it? Number one, what is it about the Seattle area where you said it's like the customer service capital of the world? What is it about uh, building a business in from in Seattle, even if it's like even if it's a band, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and being so customer oriented. Well, I, I think Nordstrom set the template for mm -hmm. uh, ne definitely needing to have customer service. And when Howard Schultz st uh, started what be became this iteration of, mm -hmm. of Starbucks, he uh, publicly said that he used Nordstrom as a model. Uh, I interviewed Jeff Brotman, the, one of the co-founders of Costco. He cited Nordstrom and, and even uh, Amazon, uh, you, know, you know, Jeff Bezos. And the Amazon headquarters and the Nordstrom headquarters in downtown Seattle are about six blocks apart. Mm -hmm. So everybody pays attention to what everybody is doing. They're all in different categories, but whatever the customer uh, service dividend is, that's what they offer. So let's uh, let's talk uh, Nordstrom in particular. And actually, my my wife worked at Nordstrom for a, a number of years, and and so whenever I hear all of these customer service stories about Nordstrom, I always run them by her, and she's always saying that they're you know this is true. This is how Nordstrom operate. So for for the audience and people who are not familiar with uh, the standard that Nordstrom set, do you want to kind of benchmark it for us? Well, the, the Nordstrom proposition is very simple, uh, deceivingly simple, and that's take care of the customer. So every, I mean, everybody hears about that. You have to be customer mm -hmm. focused, but a lot, uh, often that's just lip service. But yeah. Nordstrom, wh whatever they are doing, whether it's a new uh, initiative uh, on the technology side or how somebody, uh, how a salesperson can help, it's how does this impact the customer. So then it's a reverse engineering as opposed to, oh, we have this great idea and we're sure the customers will love it as opposed mm -hmm. to thinking about what the customer experience and work your way back. And then and constantly so, uh, uh, adapt and, and evolve. They've been around for 119 years. Yeah. Retail, and, that's something. Yeah. And they measure everything. I mean, everybody who works there, there's metrics that they have to hit and they measure the performance of people, whether they're hitting the standards that they're looking for. So as you say, a lot of companies will uh, you know, have the bumper sticker, customer first, customer centric, customer, whatever else you want to put in there. But very few of them actually... Uh, spell out what that means and secondly if they do spell out what it means they rarely measure it well you know you know i i like to say that when it comes to the to the song of customer service everybody knows the words but few can carry the tune <laughs> and so what were what were some of the um and what were the some of the ways that nordstrom were able to put this into practice and then have it become part of their culture and dna to the to the point that it is today well, it started, uh, as I mentioned, Nordstrom is 119 years old. So mm -hmm. when the second generation of Nordstrom, the three sons of, of the founder, now Nordstrom was strictly a shoe store. From its mm -hmm. founding in 1901 to the, to the late 60s, they sold only shoes. So they were known for wide and deep inventory. And also, if there's a problem, take it, you know, take it back, no questions yeah. asked. Uh, you know, give, give the customer their money back, build up goodwill. And that's exactly what they did. And they've been able to carry that uh, to the point that, you know, they're, they're now in Manhattan. They opened up a 330,000 square foot store in Midtown Manhattan. And people in, in New York City, and I'm originally from, from New York, are shocked that somebody is going to be nice to them 
and, and actually serve them and make it a great experience. So, you know, it, it's, it, it's carrying that, but also the corporation has to have the belief that this is what separates us. The Nordstrom's mm -hmm. will tell you what we're selling, you can get in a lot of places. Yeah. And, you know, it, it may be a better price, but service, which is so retro in this tech technology area, but you can still use technology to create certain great service. And it's and it's funny because you mentioned that about service because I do think that in this technology age people have gotten so used to the impersonal they've gotten so used to organizations putting up as many barriers and removing themselves as far as possible away from their customer uh, that I think that people crave that that element of of that personal touch that that customer service which is obviously why Nordstrom can buck the trend somewhat in the brick and mortar where everybody else is closing down and going out of business they're still able to maintain right well and they're also they they've diversified their business now the typical Nordstrom mm -hmm. store that you see anchoring a shopping mall that those stores they they they're called full line stores it's about 130 of them they only count for 50 percent of Nordstrom's mm -hmm. total sales, only half. So the, part of it is the Nordstrom Rack, which is their clearance yeah. discount, and uh, over 35% of their business is online. So they're constantly adapting, but they're using their physical store assets with their online technology. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what retail today is all about. Yeah. And then um, the, the the level of service. So, I mean, the thing is, obviously, if you're going to maintain that and have that part of your cultural DNA, uh, you have to hire the right people and you have to train them and you have to make sure that everybody, um, you know, follows the ethos. Because let's face it, as human beings, we can have 50 great experiences and then one bad one. And the one bad one will wipe out the 50, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like uh, uh, if you've had an operation, let me show you the scar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, constantly again looking at, you know, uh, what, what's going to satisfy the, the customer. Because customer service is not just a smiling, friendly, you know, salesperson. It's the, it's the person that you want to, that Nordstrom wants you to have a relationship with. Somebody mm. who will, uh, let you know when your favorite designer or your favorite label is is in the store. So they want people to to build up those relationships. Now, it's important to note that all Nordstrom salespeople are on commission. Mm -hmm. They all get an hourly yeah. wage. They're employees, but mm -hmm. where they can really make their money is on commission. And uh, there 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 there's some people now who have made over a million dollars as a salesperson in a retail store. And many people uh, can make money in the, in the six figures. Now you don't do that by waiting for somebody to come in to, and, and yep. say, you know, can I try it? You have to build up a clientele. Mm -hmm. and there, there are people who have clients who will spend 30 to 50 K with them annually. That takes time. Mm -hmm. That's looking at it as a career and not just, I'm just yeah. passing through. No, I mean, and it's very true. And as I said, just um, using my wife as an example, when she worked at Nordstrom, that's exactly what she did. She had built up a clientele because when people would come into the store, she would spend time with them, uh, um, matching the right colors to them, putting the right uh, outfits together. And they loved that extra serve, you know, where they weren't just saying, oh, you know, do you have this in a size, whatever. She was coming out and saying, well, let's lay out a whole outfit. Let's see what right. it looks like with this. And then she had repeat people coming back time and time again. And I, you know, I think one, one of the important things, especially for you know, people in, in your audience that, Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about the sale today at this yes. very moment. It's, it's about building a relationship. But there's a, uh, a gentleman who sells uh, uh, men's suits in, um, in the Washington, D.C. area for Nordstrom. And last year, I think he sold $4 million worth of merchandise. But he says, and when a customer comes in who just wants a $30 pair of socks, I will yeah. wait on them because someday they're going to want a suit and they're going to remember me. That's yeah. taking a long-term approach. 
Exactly. And it's funny you should mention that because that is where a lot of people fall down because a lot of other people would say, well, I'm not going to bother my time with the $30 sock guy, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm too, that's not going to earn me any money, but playing the long game, right? Right. Well, you know, one of, one of my favorite stories uh, came from uh, a Norse employee, Pat McCarthy, who I wrote the original book with. And he was working at, back in the 1970s in the Norton store in Tacoma. And this woman comes in, not dressed particularly well. She had a hole in her, in her shoe and nobody waited on her. Nobody even looked at her. Finally, he went over to her and he said, can I help you? And she said, I'm shopping. Uh, uh, I need outfits for the crew of my yacht. <laughs> yeah, you so, see. So, uh, so he he starts bringing out blazers and slacks, and and they're all all the other you know salespeople have their eyes are getting bigger and bigger. He ends up with in 1970 a twenty five thousand dollars sale, which would be I don't know a hundred thousand dollars sale today. But so you know the old the old cliche: don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a customer by what they're wearing. And so, I mean, as you say, so Nordstrom then have influenced all these other other companies. And what are some of the ways that these other organizations have have taken what Nordstrom does and maybe given it their own flavor? Well, let's take Amazon. And I I, I wrote the, the first book about Amazon called Amazon.com Get Big Fast, which came out in April. It'll be 20 years ago. So Jeff Bezos always started out with the proposition that Amazon was going to be the most customer centric business on the, on, the, on the planet. And they have done that. Is there customer service like Nordstrom? No, it's completely different, but mm -hmm. it is a customer you know, service focus. And uh, you know, taking an example of how the Seattle companies borrow from each other. So the Amazon Prime is just another version of the Costco membership. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. the difference? You know, it's a it, it, it's a simple idea, but mm -hmm. you know, so, it, so so they, they take that and it's just it, it's it's two things: focusing on the customer and constantly evolve. Those are the yeah. two things. The yeah, main. and 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 it is, and and you can see that because it's very easy now. And like I said, it's very easy nowadays to contrast experiences because, to be honest, you don't get a good customer experience very many places anymore because uh, a lot of organizations have used technology to to make life easy for them as opposed to make life easy for the customer. I was just reading in, in the Wall Street Journal about uh, uh, self uh, checkouts at, mm -hmm. uh, at supermarkets yeah. and how even though, even though most people hate them, they're, they're, companies, very large uh, companies that sell groceries will continue to have them. Now, I, I personally boycott those. And have you noticed there's always an employee there to actually yeah. help you? Uh, well, it, it, so still yeah, because they don't work. They, they have, I mean, in, in, they, they, if, if you've ever gone through self-checkout, how many times do you have to get that person to come over and flick their card because the, the system said there is an unauthorized item in the bagging area or you happen to knock something over and, and it's, and by the time they've come back and forth to all the self checkouts, they could have actually just checked everybody out. Right. It, you know, the, 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 those systems are not user friendly. They're <laughs> they're 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 store friendly. You know, <laughs> internally friendly, out, outwardly not so much. <laughs> Ex exactly. And it is that's a, it, and it's fascinating how. Uh, you know how organizations continue to go down that uh, go down that road of 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 adapting things or adopting things that make it easy for them, but just like you know, irritate your customers. Right. Well, and well, you know, I, I, I've been you know with the success of of my books, I've been speaking to mm -hmm. to corporate groups for the last twenty five years. I've done this in twenty seven countries, and I'm there to to remind people of stuff that they already know. Yeah. And, you know, all, all it is, 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 is a reminder, you know, so I talk about trust and I talk about being nice and all this stuff. And uh, but it, you know, what, what, what happens is that let's say there's an imaginary customer service counter on one side. Those of us who are uh, the customer, we know exactly what we want. Good product, good service at a good price. And there's a problem. You're going to take care of it. We know this. And then we move to the other side of the imaginary customer service counter. We're the ones who are giving the service. And suddenly somebody hits the delete button on yeah. our customer service memory. And now it's, it's not our policy you know, against our rules. My manager is on vacation. I can't get you or 
you know, blah, blah. We, we didn't want to hear that when we were customers. Why should we give that? And, and and that is the thing that always amazes me. It's like it's incredible. It's how we're all consumers, we're all buyers, we're all customers, and and it's like I mean we just go back to the self checkout. Is I like that decision was made, and those machines were adopted by by people who are also customers. And I guarantee you, they probably don't use self checkout yeah. when they go to the grocery store themselves. Right, right. You know, all, all this is 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 simple. It's just the execution. You know, so, so when we talk about what, what, what sets Nordstrom apart, it's the execution. Mm -hmm. uh, is it 100%? No, there's somebody getting bad service at Nordstrom right now. Sure. Uh, you know, because they have 72,000 employees, the chances of somebody not living up to it are, uh, uh, are huge. And pe but people will say, you know, I can understand if it was XYZ department store, but this is Nordstrom. You know, there's a higher standard. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they, yeah. they don't brag about their customer service. No, exactly. But I said, like I said, when my wife worked there every morning before they opened, they would start by reading out the customer comments from the day before. Mm -hmm. And if there right. were any bad customer comments, it was like red alert. Everybody, mm -hmm. you got to step up up your game today. That's right. Um, they want the good comments and the bad comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you, you, you learn from the from the, the bad comments. Yeah. So, so um, what what is another um, before we finish up? What is another core lesson that we can all um, learn from Nordstrom, and particularly maybe people who are starting out their businesses now, who maybe are very enamored with you know technology and all the other things that they can do. What are some of the just old fashioned, le enduring lessons? Because sometimes people always think that. Anything that's any anything that's old is well that's passe. <laughs> but sometimes there there are things that they're old, but they they endure because they just fundamentally hold true regardless of the time and place. Well, I think again, I'm gonna I'm gonna say things that are so ridiculously mm -hmm. basic. You say you know, this guy is an author. You can see you know that people <laughs> actually pay pay him to tell him this stuff. Uh, but it's you know it's things like you know taking your customers' needs in mind first and not your own. You know, at, at, at Nordstrom, every question they ask is, how does this benefit the customer? Not how does it benefit us, how does it streamline, streamline our observation, or our, mm -hmm. our, our, our operation? It's what is gonna make the customer work. And the other thing is constantly evolve. Yeah. And, and when you look at technology, it's not te technology for technology's sake, but it's technology that solves a problem. And if it's mm -hmm. just a, you know, it, it isn't that cool, but it, it how, how does it move the ball down the field? Then, then it, it, it isn't worth anything. And it, I, I did a book several years ago called the, the Mom and Pop Store about small independent uh, retailers mm -hmm. all around the country. But I came away with two things that they all had in common. One is that they were constantly evolving, adapting to change. And the other was connecting to the community being right. a part of where you are. So whether you're in a virtual community or a literal community, it has to be more than just the exchange of money for goods and services. There has to be something else there that's, that, that's going to make your story a compelling story. Yeah, no, those great points, great points to end up on. And also I would, uh, I would uh, say to everybody, next time you are doing self checkout in a store <laughs> and the thing is bleeping and you're getting frustrated, maybe think about your own business or wherever you work and say, am I creating the same self checkout experience for my customers? <laughs> That's a good question to ask. <laughs> Listen, Robert Spector, this has been fantastic. Uh, so the book, hopefully you're working on this book right now about the Seattle companies and customer service. We really look forward to seeing that um, and looking at that when it comes out. Uh, the robertspector.com. We'll have all of Robert's information in his contributor bio going along with this uh, video interview. But before we go, Robert, is there anything you want to add? Tell people a little bit more about what you do. Well, uh, I, as you as you described, I am a uh, an author, and I've been a, uh, a speaker, as I mentioned, for the last twenty five years. And uh, I've spoken to every kind of business you can imagine in twenty seven countries. And you know what? what I think it's important whether it's me or any other of my friends who are who are great customer service speakers who have great great books. You know, take what those books are and 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 actually apply it. Not just say, hey, "Isn't this a great idea?" Use what you have. You know, you're attending conferences, you're what you're listening to podcasts and 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 watching programs such as yours. 
really find a way to integrate those kinds of things without disrupting your entire company. Find mm-hmm. a way that, to, to have it seamlessly fit in, even if it's one good idea. That's the way to start. Yeah, fanta- that's fantastic advice. All right. Well, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Robert, thanks so much for joining us today. And I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.